Peace. Welcome to the Light Bar Blessings Podcast, where we build with professional leaders who share their organic life lessons. I'm your host, T.O. Clay. My mission is to leverage and extract intellectual perspective, thought-provoking conversation, and real Light Bar moment experiences to help others reflect, develop, and grow as people. These lessons are inspired by the priceless moments in life we use to connect the dots and propel ourselves forward along our journey. It's time to turn on the lamp and shine light. Peace, love, and light. Peace, love, and light. T.O. Clay Light Bar Blessings. I want to thank everybody once again for checking us out today. Today, I have a very special guest, a special guest that I love dearly, a special guest that has led me for many years. Uh, always been that example, the motivator who motivates the motivator. Uh, Brother Mario Phil, Sergeant Major, retired host of Unarmored Talk podcast, uh, the Parade Deck. Uh, words go without saying, high powered individual. And I'm just so grateful to have you on today. How are you feeling today, my good brother? Man, T.O. Sergeant Major, retired. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I hear you. T.O. Clay. Man, I, I'm honored to be on your show. I'm doing amazing, my friend. Yes, bro. And I, and I, I really want to thank you, man, you know, on behalf of my family, uh, on behalf of all the Marines out there that we love so near and dear. Truly, thank you, man, for, for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today, man. It, 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 it means the world to me, man. I always say, you know, I want to bring on the best leaders that I personally know, best leaders that I feel are making a huge you know, impact on, on the masses and, and brother, you're doing that, man. I'm so proud and so grateful to continue to follow in your footsteps, man. So again, uh, how, 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 how do you feel right now in this moment? How do you feel? Cause I know you're busy. How are you feeling right now, bro? You, you know, I'm having fun, man. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I am having fun. I'm thankful for God. Uh, you know, I have Christian yes. beliefs. And so, so I, I'm, you know, I am thankful that God, every day, no matter what is happening, you know, have that spiritual foundation, that good or bad, you know, those are man-made words. It is what it is, but, uh, but allows me to, to, to give back and to serve uh, other people, man, to make a difference before it's time to, you know, write report to the commanding general right. of the world for me. That's, that's right, man. Word. Did, did you grow up in the church? Did did you have that foundation growing up, church wise? Hell yeah, we we didn't have a choice, man. My wife, my mom ran that bath water. We we knew we had to go to church on Sunday when she turned on the bathtub. She hey, this is what my mom said. She said, "Look, here's the deal. Um, when y'all get older, y'all gonna have the freedom yes. of choice." She said, "Y'all can choose who y'all want to serve." She says, "But I'm gonna tell you something. I I choose to have Christian beliefs, and I choose to serve God." She said, if you choose to serve anything else, that's your choice. She goes, but let me tell you, if you don't choose to serve anything, something will choose to oh, serve your soul. It will be filled with 100%, something. 100%, dog. That, that's, that's wise right there, man. Uh, I was talking to the wife the other day. I told her, I said, you know, I, I miss my grandmothers because, you know, they just always had that positive, wise word of wisdom to give, man. And uh, it, it can't be replaced, brother. So uh, that makes me proud and happy. And, and Without you even telling me that, man, I'll be honest with you, Mario. I know that just from the spirit and the awe that you give off. You know, the, the spirit that you've always given off, man, has always been what I would definitely call infectious. Anybody out there that knows you knows that, man. Again, for those of you out there who have never served in the military, um, we, we take motivation very serious, especially as United States Marines. And this gentleman right here, I can't. I can't put anyone else on that pedestal in terms of motivation, like the gentleman that you see here with us today. Um, I'm just so grateful, man. Like I said, I've I've had this pleasure and this blessing to sit down with, with some great leaders and, you know, just just have these organic conversations, man, and and really hone in on those light bulb moments that, you know, they've experienced throughout their their careers, their life uh, at at home, at work type thing. Uh, and, and it's like therapy, man. And. I watch a lot of your episodes yeah. as well, man, and you're bringing such a diverse, you know, uh, value to the table, man. And, it, you know, w what's your vision for Unarmored Talk, man, if you don't mind? 
Yeah, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to, to you know, T.O. Light Bulb Moments, shame on you. Light Bulb, light bulb lessons. lessons. Yes, sir. Get on there. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Share. Let, let me ask you this. Before you answer that first question, which was your, your vision of Unarmored, starting off with the Unarmored podcast, uh, did, it, did it move at the pace in which you expected for it to move? Mm-mm. You, you know, T.O., a lot of people don't know that uh, they can do the research. The preponderance of people who start podcasting, um, they stop producing episodes after right. six. And I think when I did research, I think it was like almost up to 70 percent. Don't even six episodes and they're, um, in, they're not wow. even producing. Yeah. Even after 12 months, it, like, yeah, it's like once you once you once you get to a podcaster who's still producing episodes after two or three years yeah they're they're, they're very few right few. right so yeah so i am beyond i never thought i'd be going to year three. Oh man and um and, and have guests lined up already to really almost 2025 that's right hey you will you will high demand bro right now and and what, what i love about man unarmored is you know the sense of the word I mean, you, you've interviewed, man, some, some real heroes, bro. I mean, like real combat, you know, in the fire. Hey, man, the things that we see on TV, you've interviewed some of these individuals and, and they love you, man. They have that passion because they know, you know, serving with you over the years that they could be vulnerable with you. They could be empathetic and, and really take off that armor, man. So back to that original question, that vision is that something that, you know, you 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 wanted to see move in that direction to hey, come come straight forward, no fluff, take off the armor. Can can you elaborate a little bit on that for us, Mario? Yeah, first of all, that wasn't my vision, man. My the, the original name of my podcast was called Real Talk from the Streets. What? Come on, <laughs> man. Yeah, right, dog. I'm, I don't believe that. I am dog. not. I don't believe that. Okay. Okay. I mean, how can I be the host and producer of Unarmored Talk and I ain't unarmored? That's right. My, yeah, man. Hey, Tio, I said, I said, I had a vision of being, of starting a podcast. That was the vision. But then when I sent it to my team, Dr. Jerry Washington, you know, Zeke Mulata, the whole team, Ellis Craig, I was like, they was like, okay, but that's confusing. Right. What do you mean, real talk from the streets? I was like, you know, keep it real. Mm. <laughs> They said, what did that mean? Hey. And so we went through this, it was four months, four months of going, you know, what do y'all think about this? Mario, that, that's a little confusing. Mm -hmm. You need to do research and come back. And so four months of this, T.O., and finally, you know, Dr. Jerry Washington, you know, he's a retired Marine, Rah. Simplify Jerry. Jerry was like, now, now you have a human podcast. You know, your about statement is, is an accurate. Right. You can bring any human on. I was like, hmm. Mm. And then when I called Zeke, Zeke was like, you know, Zeke's never served. He's from, he's from South Africa. I love his guy. Just, just brilliant. Zeke said one thing about you, and I ain't going to even try his accent. Right, right, right. <laughs> I love it. If Zeke. He said, one thing about you military folks is y'all always armored. Mm. And, and he said, and sometimes you have to be. And I said, wait a minute. All humans are armored. Everybody got something that they are protecting, you know, they don't want to share. Indeed. And that's how we came up with unarmored talk, man. That's exactly how it happened. But my vision, real talk from the streets. Real talk from the streets. That's real right there. Where, where did you grow up, man? Where did you grow up? I grew up, I grew up in Pontiac, Pontiac and Auburn Hills, Michigan. Okay. Man. that's right, that's right, man. Yeah, are you are you a, a a Wolverine fan, Spartan fan? Mm -hmm. I mean, Come hey, on, you know I'm, you know I'm go blue. Okay, all right, I respect that because I was gonna say, hey, that green and white be powerful too, though, bro. That green and white be yeah, powerful. I'm, I'm starting to have some technical difficulties. <laughs> I know that's right, dog. Hey, old Tom Izzo up there, man. Hey, hey, hey you know what? Hey, blessings be to God, Mario. My my nephew got a uh, offer from the University of Michigan football, man. Nice. We're, we're, we're grateful. Uh, he's still playing his cards to see, you know, where he wants to end up. Yeah. He actually wants to come down here with these Georgia Bulldogs. So 
Athens is, is about 30 minutes from, from my house. So, man, if, if we could pull that off, that'd be a blessing, man. But yeah, man. So real talk from the streets, man. Wow. That's, that, that's, that's pretty heavy right there. Real talk. And T.O., you the, you the first one that gets it on your show. No one, you know, the only, only one who knows that is the oh, team. Oh, man. You, you're, you're well, hey, man, I, I appreciate it. I, I know something about those streets translated into your leadership style. It has to. You know, I've, I've piddled and peddled out in those streets, Mario, and you're, you're one of the first leaders that I had that I really, truly felt like I related to man, like hey, you know, that that gentleman right there, uh, it was unarmored from the time I met you. The first time I met you was unarmored. Um, I remember seeing you as as a drill instructor back in the days. Uh, I was a recruit in 1998. I remember seeing you down in that area, you know, making things happen. Then up in the D.C. area, so uh, just throughout the whole career, man, it's just been such an honor and a blessing to to serve alongside someone like yourself, man. And, and I know that, that street's in you, you know, from a, from a good perspective, you know, I don't think everything yeah. in the streets is, is always negative. Hey, sometimes it's, it's, it's the environment, you know, it's what, what you make do, you know, as you move forward. And, and you have certainly done that good, sir. Listen, man, uh, it, it, this is like Bob Lessons. And, you know, we always talk about, you know, th those aspects of leadership that, you know, that light bulb goes off in your head, that, that doom is what I like to say. And that light bulb goes off and, and you take something and extract something from that moment, albeit positive or negative. I, I really would like to hear, you know, since you have retired, that transition for you, what, what has that transition been like from the day you left the cloth of the United States Marine Corps and, and traversing up till now? What's that transition been like? Yeah, M multiple light bulb lessons. Okay, okay. Well, hey, we want to hear, it, brother. Give, give us, give us some of them good light bulbs, man. What you got? <laughs> hey, you, you know, I know we, we got it, you know, some time, but you know, I, if I could, if I could highlight, you know, two of them. No, you know, I'll pick one. I'll pick one. Okay. When when I got sick last year, mm. um, and a lot of folks don't know. You know, I had got a staph bacteria that was uh, in my bloodstream. The doctors to this day don't know how it got in my bloodstream. So, so essentially, my entire body was shutting down with sepsis or septic. And, and so, so during that, really, I was I was in the hospital. I was in ICU in Camp Lejeune, um, which they did an amazing job at the Naval Medical Center in Camp Lejeune. And, and then I was transported down to Portsmouth's ICU. Um, again, Missy Elliott, P Town, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But but I was down there, and 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 so about a month in two ICUs, uh, fifty pounds lighter. I lost fifty pounds in seven days. Uh, I had two two blood clots. My liver was shutting down. My lungs were compromised. Wow. Um, success to me was just to be able to to stand up. Well, to be able to get out of the bed and to be able to stand stand up without holding on to the nurse, mm. um, and then and then getting the pick line put in and having in home uh, care for another 30, 30 days. So this entire kind of journey um, started around November the third of last year of twenty twenty two, and then kind of culminated about March of twenty twenty three. Okay of this year when I kind of got back to you know, being healthy. So with that quick journey, my light bulb lesson was when I was in the hospital, I had no idea that they didn't believe I was going to live because if you do your research, when you're septic, um, it's got a very high mortality rate because your entire body is poisoned. Right. But the chaplain came in one time, he goes, you're, you're so at peace. Mm. And it was, it was that I'll share with you. And I told him, I said, well, I said, I had read the book of Job last year um, because I was going through a lot of personal challenges or it was 2018. I'm sorry. And I told him, I said, and I felt that I was being tested for five years. Wow. And I said, and the last test chaplain is, 
I knew I was going to get sick because I told my wife that I think I believe I'm going to get sick. I told her that, you know, January 2022. So I believe I'm going to get sick because that was kind of the last test for Joe. And I got sick and no one knew how. And I said, but as I examined my 47 years of living at that time, so I was at peace. Wow. May, may the way I live tell the story after I'm gone. Mm, mm, mm. I said, anyone I had done wrong, I made efforts to apologize. Anyone I had lied to, I made efforts to tell the truth. I started to examine. I said, I never tried to be like anyone because I can't. Right. Be you. I never allow people to influence me not to be me. Don't, why are you so motivated? Why not? Mm. You know, you're short and I'm the best short person you've ever met. You, you know, and I started to examine. And then I even thought about when I was in Afghanistan, February 2020, you know, 2011, when I stepped on three IEDs that detonated after I got off of them, I said, see if I was tall and heavy, it probably would have went off, mm -hmm. but I was short because God had, you know, God didn't want me to, you know, so I examined. Right. And at that moment, I was at peace. Nothing bothered me. I was at peace. And I told him that I said it was the way I had lived. And I was able to reflect on the choices I have made, the failures that I had endured, the sins I have committed the wrongdoings I've done in my life and how I rectified them, not seeing this coming, I was okay to go and meet God. Come on, man. Get, and not even get judged, but to be held accountable for my life. And you know, I'm a Marine and then to stand duty on the streets. Mm. <laughs> that was my moment is if you, if you get up in the morning and you intentionally live your life for you first but for others where you are you and where you if you could see how you're living and you're not ashamed it's death is is is, is just an out to me it's just that moment is an affirmation that you've done what you had to do while you're living on this very short time on this earth. That that was my light bulb, bulb moment. Wow. And my light bulb lesson. Wow. Bro, you honestly laid there and you thought you was going to die, correct? I didn't even have a clue. What do you, what do you mean? You know when I found out that how sick I was, you know? When, bro? I found out when I started to go to my follow-up appointments and I, and, I, and I went to go visit the doctors that, that took care of me in ICU here in Naval Medical Hospital Camp Lejeune. Mm. And the way, you know, you know nonverbal communication is more powerful than verbal. Oh, yeah. And the way they looked at me, one, one, me and one of the corpsmen, we hugged and cried. Wow. And he said, we don't get close to patients, but and I could read between the lines. And it was afterwards when I realized that they were like, he's not gonna make it. Mm. But I had no idea how sick I was until after. Wow, dog. I just remember getting a phone call from our good brother, Ross Blaine. And Ross said, pray for our brother Mario because play, he might not make it. And man, you talking about a feeling that is not, and I'm gonna be honest, you know, unarmored light bulb lessons. That's how we get down, bro. Like, yeah. I said, not the motivator, dog. It's no way. <laughs> not the motivator, dog. And and you've heard the you've heard the the phrase, Mario, the good ones sometimes get taken early. That was also in my spirit, bro. Yeah. And I prayed, man. I prayed. And I didn't realize that it was as serious as what it was. And, you know, to hear that first account from you, bro, that's that's the real light bulb. That that that's a light bulb that uh 
That's God, man. Yeah. And, you know, T.O., you hear people, and I used to say it. Let, let me not even say it here, people. I used to say mm-hmm. it. I used to say, live every day like with your last. Mm-hmm. You never know. That's right. But when I went to combat multiple times, there was some preparation. Mm-hmm. You know, there were some some assumptions. All right, this might be it. But I never crossed my mind when I woke up at two in the morning, like on November the third, with a sharp pain in my lower back. It never crossed my mind that that is when my liver c- kicked out a blood clot in my renal vein, oh. and that's when things started to shut down internally. Wow. A lot of a lot of people don't even know when I went up to Atlanta to do the, the to be their guest of honor at the Marine Corps ball mm-hmm. and shout out the you know the, the Sergeant Major Higdon retired. Mm-hmm. What they didn't know is when they was playing the, the Commandant's video, man, I was going down. I prayed so hard. The room started shrinking. I was sweating. And I said, I have no idea what's going on, but God, please just let me get through the speech. Mm. If I can just get through the speech and then, you know, fall face first on the Semper Fi, I'm good. (laughs) Ooh, man. Oh, man. Had no idea, man. And I, you know, and the next day, you know, that night, my right side of my body, I couldn't move it. And my wife said, "We, we, we... I said, babe, let let me sleep. Hopefully, you know, things improve. I said, but if things don't improve, we got to go straight. I said, babe, let's go straight to the ER. I just want to be close to home. And she was like, okay. And we got that morning. I could barely, like I played it off in front of some of the Marines that was at the ball the night prior. Right. And I could barely get in that truck. And my wife, God bless Nicole. Nicole drove seven straight hours Mm. from Atlanta to Camp Lejeune to your, you know, uh, ER. And they had to wheelchair me out. Man, shout out to Nicole. Shout yeah. out to Nicole. We love you, Nicole. We love you 100%, <laughs> man. What 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 does that mean to you, man? All the years you and Nicole been together, seeing her step up and take charge and carry out the plan of the day when you were at your most vulnerable. How do you feel right now about that, bro? You, you you know one thing uh, one of the things I always believed uh, you know To is that cir- circumstance reveals the true character of, of a person. Mm-hmm. You really want to see the true character sit back and watch them in circumstances, right? And it could be anything. You just hit the lottery, you got a promotion, or you just told you just got told you got some illness, yeah, and to 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 watch her um just not even flinch i could she i couldn't even tell she was so worried mm-hmm. one day i remember this because it was a night after i, I went into um shock because i just remember that it was just so dang cold and the next morning she had she had driven from uh jacksonville north carolina to portsmouth you know, when I was down in Portsmouth right. and it was a whole team of doctors and everybody. I thought that was normal. <laughs> right. And they were like, no. And and they looked at my eyes and they said, "Is are his, they said, um, are his eyes normally that yellow? Mm. And she, and she said, no, but, and excuse me, I get emotional. It's all right, brother. But she, she knew my liver was was done it was my liver was gone it was shutting down yeah man and she didn't and she didn't flinch that's right she responded and so Ooh. she was and, yes. and they and, and they were and they told me afterwards that mario the reason why the entire team was in there because that's not standard practice they said because your entire body was under attack. Yeah, man. My sitting heart rate was 150 laying. And so they were concerned about cardiac arrest. You know, my mother died of, of uh, a V-fib, a heart attack. V-fib is when all four chambers closed. Right. And so she died unexpectedly years ago of that. So they were worried that, that, you know, that might be a genetic thing and I may die like her. 
um, where potentially my heart just gives out because it, it can't pump at 150. You know, and it was pumping at 140, 150, laying down for weeks. Oh, man. So, so they were just, it was a whole team, you know, and, and I developed a secondary infection from my waist down where my, my, my waist down to my feet were so swollen, I couldn't move anything. And then I developed all these abscesses that got embedded in my muscles. One got on my prostate, T.O. Mm. They had to do prostate, had to do an ex- procedure on my prostate. And I ain't going to lie to you. All this is happening, the cold, just very focused, never knew. And I will tell you something funny for your audience. When they was rolling me out to do the prostate thing, they said, oh, here's some side effects. <laughs> yes, sir. And I'm, I'm, I'm like high as hell. Like they gave me some of that good yeah. stuff. So I'm, I just remember she said, she said, you about to go out, but are you okay with potentially some of these side effects? Like, hell yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Shoot, I'm, I'm young. I'm good. I signed that thing, man. I got every side effect. So part of that is one, one if they ever mess with your prostate, one is you can't hold, you come become inconstant. You can't hold your pee. Okay. Okay. So I was in a diaper. Hey, it's all right, brother. And a diaper, <laughs> you know, every side, I was like, y'all got to be here. So, <laughs> hey, do you, you have the Eagle Glove and Lake on that diaper? I'm sure you probably, if you could have, you would have. I had every Chevron from Lance Corporal hey, on that sucker, dog. That's, yeah. that's what's up, dog. That's what's up. I, 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 you know, it, it, so the whole time, you know, she just, you know, she just never, you know, I just never knew until afterwards. Um, even when I was motivated to go in the commissary and get my depends, by the way, and diapers, was, I was like, give me some diapers. Right. But the whole time she was strong, man. And she did. Yeah, she. So circumstance revealed that she just, it's, you know, we're on social media and stuff. It ain't, you know, that's real. That's, that's real. She, she, she loves her little husband. Yeah, bro. That That's amazing, man. I'm, I'm so grateful to hear that, bro. Man, I'm I'm just grateful that you're here. Uh, I, I I feel the spirit, man. When you, when when you talk about these things, uh, you've you've never opened up, you know, full throttle about it like today. And man, I appreciate you for that, bro. Like the the goodness that you have done with other people. I know the good God Almighty said, man, I'm not done with Mario Fields. He's got more to do. And man, the fact that you pulled through that thing, and, and like you said, with Nicole being there, and, you know, the family, the extended family, friends, man, I said on behalf of all of us, and I know many have said it, man, but man, we are so grateful that you are still here with us today, brother. And we love you, man. We love you, dog. The motivator is the motivator, bro. And who's going to motivate the motivator, motivator? So, man, I'm just grateful, bro. Grateful, man. No, I. No, I appreciate it. and all the support, everybody, man. It was just awesome, and I'm thankful too. And and, and I'll leave, you know, and I kept my humor, Tio, and I'll leave you with this. I, you know, I told people, I said I had um, went to Starbucks off, and if you guys are familiar with Jacksonville, North Carolina, I told everybody, I said I went to uh, Starbucks and had coffee with Death, mm. and we had some great conversations. I mean, you know, I was like learned a lot from him, right. You, you know, he learned a lot, of, I guess, from me. I don't know. I said, but as we finished up our coffee, you know, we walked to the door and he, and he looked at me and he said, well, Mario, let me give you a ride. I said, no, nah, I'm good. I, I said, nah, I, I Uber. That's right. I, said, I, I know. I know I'm going to have to meet you sooner or later. That's right. But right now, I'm going to get my, you know, my mobile device and call me a, a lift because I ain't riding with you today. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> sir. I feel you on that one, bro. I feel you. I feel you, man. As, as, hey, I feel you on that one, bro. That's the light bulb, too. I, hey, I don't even want to see that kind of Starbucks, bro. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll go through the drive through Yeah, man. Yeah, man. But look, man, I, I don't want to waste no more of your day. I know you got things to do, man. You're a busy man. You're high-powered, value professional. And man, we 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 thank you, man. Light bulb blessings. We truly appreciate you coming through, blessing us today. Uh, any parting words for the individuals out there that 
may be dealing with some of the same thing, may, may have a family member. Any parting words of encouragement for those people? Yeah, just, um, you know, be intentional with what you do in life and just, and, and literally just re remember, you, you on borrowed time, literally. And I hope that you can, you have the time, anyone, that you can do some examination of your life. Mm. And I hope that you take the steps. You can't fix what's done, but at least you can, you can provide some peace for yourself. That's right. By saying, I'm sorry to people that you may need to say, I'm sorry, even if they don't want to hear it, just say it, it'll bring you some peace. Um, repenting, you know, if you, you have Christian beliefs and repenting in person, in private and, and in public. That's right. And then last but not least, remembering, as my, my good friend, Dr. Washington would say, the thing that separates all human beings from other living things, living, you know, living beings is our ability to communicate information across generations. That's right. And it's a choice. And T.O., I salute you and thank you for making that choice to create a platform that this content is forever and it will support generations forever. And that's my last words, my friend. Thank hey, you. Hey, brother. Thank you. Love you to death. Hey, we'll be talking soon. For everybody out there that tuned in with us, we thank you. Hey, check out Unarmored Talk podcast. Check out the Parade Deck. Type it in. It's going to pop up. It'll be there. I promise you. Also, light bulb lessons, you know what time it is. All things positive, all things leadership. And as we always say, peace. Peace. <laughs>